Hi everybody, welcome to Watts 1030 Introduction to Servers and Web Hosting, the Manipulating Text Project. So in this, um, this week what we're looking at is using different command line text editors. And the thing about command line text editors is that they are, you know, very beloved by many, many developers and engineers. However, they are not like the text editors that we're used to in sort of the graphical interface. This is not like Word or Pages or even WordPerfect um, or anything like that if you've used older editors. We're, we're pretty used to WYSIWYG text editors, which is the what you see is what you get approach, where we type out the text, we expect it to look like it looks, and then... Um, you know, we move forward. And, you know, most people, when they write text, they don't really think about things like headings and stuff. So just the nature that we're writing web pages makes us care a little more about the format of the text that we're using. And plain text is really the most common information format that there is. So plain, un unmarked up text is uh, really glorious. And that's what these text editors are all about you'll often find yourself in a situation where you'll access a uh, machine that you're running a website on and it will have one or the other text editor. Sometimes it will have all three of these text editors. Sometimes it will only have one or two of them. Um, you need to be able to get into an editor, modify whatever you need to modify in a settings file or configuration file or something like that, and then be able to get out. And uh, that's a really important skill to have. And if you don't have that, then you can end up really, really stuck on uh, different deployment tasks and, and different web projects. So we're gonna take this week to try out the three main uh, command line text editors that are in use and we're going to uh, get, get the hang of them at least enough that we can open a file, make modifications, and save it again. So that's the idea. So the way that this assignment is broken out uh, the first thing that you're gonna need to do is make sure that you have all three text editors installed. We're gonna use Nano, Emacs, and VI um, they're all each of them is quite different and I'll run through just a basic of what each one of them looks like in a second we're also going to um, fulfill these same basic requirements once in each directory so we have a directory in this repo dedicated to each of these editors and we're going to run through these steps in each directory so uh, this requires us to create a new file um, and type in it it requires us to do some editing of an HTML file. Um, it requires us to uh, correct typos in another text file, uh, to remove footnote indicators in another text file, um, to update an example HTTPD comp file like we might use with the Apache web server, and then to do some uh, find and, and count results um, out of a file. So again, these these all actually correspond to many different things. You know, often um, if you if you change the name of something, you need to find out exactly where is that name referenced. All within a file, you're going to open up your text editor. You're going to do a find. You're going to find everywhere where that name is referenced, and you're going to change it. You might do a find replace across the board. You might just want to know how many how many instances of this or that do we have in the file, and you'll need to get those counts out of things. Or um, you know, you're going to need to find patterns like like things with brackets around them or whatnot. All kinds of tools built into these editors that you can use to, uh, to, to get your work done. So um, the first thing that we're going to do now with all of these assignments in Watts 1030, we're only using the command line. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is copy our clone URL to the clipboard and then um, and then I'm going to go in and I need to log into my droplet. So I'm going to use a command which is command control R, which brings up my reverse interactive search, and that's going to search my history. And I know that I connected to this SSH uh, through SSH to my to my droplet um, previously, and so I know that that was the previous command that I ran to connect to it. And so I'm connected now to my Ubuntu droplet. Uh, you can see that it's running Ubuntu, and I get my information readout here about what's going on. Now, um, the very first thing that I want to do is uh, clone my repository. So let me see where I am. I'm in my root repository here. If I do an ls, I can see that I have my previous repository for the previous assignment cloned here. I'm using the same droplet that I used for the moving files assignment. So I'm going ahead and clone it. I'm going to run git clone, and then I'm going to paste in using command v, 
the the clone URL. Now I'm cloning the SU Web Dev uh, primary um, uh, repository. You should make sure to fork this repository before you clone it because you're going to need to push your results back up. For the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to push any results back up. So I'm just going to go ahead and clone out this this repo here. So now I successfully cloned it. So if I do an ls again, I see that that, that repo is there. I'm so I'm going to go into my manipulating text project now and I'm going to uh, start working with those files a little bit. So I'm going to go uh, CD Watts 1030 M and then I'm going to type a in so that I get manipulating text. I'm using the tab completion. So I'm hitting the tab button to complete. I have LS and now I see that I have my three directories. Now I'm going to go into the Emacs directory first because it's listed first. But by default, you won't have Emacs installed. So we'll need to install it by running apt-get install Emacs. And it will say, it basically says that I already have it installed because I already installed it while I was working on other stuff. I like Emacs, so I use it often. Um, I can also just make sure that I have everything here. I can hit nano and I can go into nano. Okay, I'm gonna hit control X to exit nano. And I can hit Vi and I go into Vi, I hit escape colon Q to exit Vi. Um, so I'll go back into Emacs. And in Emacs here, um, we can uh, pull up files and we can, um, we can do all sorts of things. Um, notice that Emacs doesn't really look like anything else. You use the control and it, you do weird things like this control X F to try to find a file. And you notice it's giving me the find file at the bottom here. So I can uh, find a file. I can hit tab tab and get my list of files that will show up. So I can go into um, you know 17 rules.txt and I can use my tab completion there. And when I hit that, I come in here and I can start editing. And in Emacs, you can just start editing like normal. So I can go right to the end of the line and edit. And that's all fine. And when I want to save that, I can go control XS to save and then control XC to close Emacs. That's not like normal files. Um, I can use nano. If I go into nano, then nano always gives me the um, nano always gives me the files or all the commands listed across the bottom. And then as I use the commands, it'll give me any kind of additional commands on command. Um, so so let me type here hello world and then if I'm going to save it I want to use control O for write out and the file name that I'm going to write I'm just going to call this temp.txt this is not a part of the assignment but just something that I'm doing for demonstration here and it wrote one line and that's it I could also read a file so I could insert content from a file so um, that file could be 17 and I can hit use the tab completion again here to complete 17 rules.txt. And if I hit enter, you notice that it, it actually put 17 rules.txt into this file. So it didn't just open the file, it actually pasted that whole thing in there. And there's my hello world right up at the top still. So I can control O to write that out again and write it out to temp text again. And then I can control X to exit. And that's nano. Um, obviously, there's a lot more that you can do there. Finally, Vi is one of the ones that people love the most, but it's also kind of a strange uh, program. So um, you can start typing, but you'll notice that nothing happens when you start typing until you hit I. Um, when you hit I, you go into insertion mode, and then you can start typing. And then if you want to get out of insertion mode, you hit escape, and then you hit the colon to bring up your command line within the application and you can do different things like W for write and it will say oh there's no file name to write to so I can say W uh, temp2.txt and it wrote it to temp2.txt I can also say Q to quit colon Q to quit so the most important thing to remember with Vi is that escape colon Q gets you out of Vi <laughs> and, and frankly um, that's my favorite part about it um, regardless, uh, 
this is um, it, Vi is Vi is an interesting application because it's a mode based editor. So you go in, in into that insert mode and then you go into um, view mode and um, things are things are pretty fascinating. So that's the basics of the three editors. You're basically going to use each of those three editors to perform these tasks and then um, and then you're going to get a good feel for comparing between them and you're going to have a better idea for which one of these editors you're going to pull up when you need to do command line tasks later on. Okay, so um, so now if I was uh, all done with my project, I'd run a git status like I always do, see what changed, and then I'd follow the rules here to add in the stuff that changed, and then push that up to GitHub. I'm not going to do that now. We'll save that for another video. Um, have fun working on your uh, on getting to know these text editors. Enjoy yourselves. Um, dig into them a little bit. They're fascinating, fascinating pieces of software. And whether or not you love them or hate them, you definitely have to agree that they are uh, unique and interesting for sure. Um, take it easy. Good luck. And have fun.